as I told you before, there are three methods to do hypothesis testing. Critical value method, z-score method and p-value method. We have already discussed the critical value method and z-score method. So in this lecture, I'm going to talk about the p-value method. Let's start with a couple of definitions. By definition, a p-value is a probability that provides a measure of the evidence against the null hypothesis provided by the sample. So, what do you understand by this definition? Well, not much, I guess. So, let me define p-value in a more simple and detailed manner. Under the assumption that null hypothesis is true, p-value is the probability of observing a phenomena at least as extreme as that observed. Now, does this definition make sense to you? Well, I guess not. Maybe you are still confused. Actually, understanding the concept of p-value is slightly difficult, but once you get hold of it, your life will become a hell lot easier. If you are given the p-value, then you can answer a hypothesis question in seconds. Also, you will notice or you may have noticed the use of this concept in many research papers as well. All that said, let's understand this concept step by step with the help of an example. So let's say we are given that the null hypothesis is mu less than equal to 100 and the alternative hypothesis is mu greater than 100. And suppose the sample statistic, that is the observed sample mean is equal to 120. I know this is not a full-fledged question, but this much information is sufficient for now to make you understand the concept of p-value. Also, let's assume that the distribution of sample means is normally distributed. So graphically, we can represent all this information like this. Okay, so here we have mu, that is the hypothesized mean equal to 100. The observed sample average is equal to 120 and we have to find the p-value. Now, by definition, assuming that the null hypothesis is true, the p-value is the probability of observing a phenomena at least as extreme as that observed. So in this case, the p-value is the probability of getting 120 or something more extreme, that is 120 or something even farther to the right of 120 assuming that the null hypothesis is true. By extreme values here, we mean values to the right of 120 because this is a case of right tail test. And why is this a case of right tail test? Well, this is because we have greater than sign in the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is mu greater than 100. Okay. So in this example, the probability of this shaded region is the p-value. Now let's discuss what is the use of this p-value. What does it indicate? Well, the rule is a high p-value supports the null hypothesis and a low p-value does not support the null hypothesis. I mean, think of it this way. If your p-value is 1%, then that means your observed sample statistic is somewhere here in the extreme right. So in this case, if the rejection region is 5% of the distribution, then your observed sample statistic will lie in the rejection region. And this is an evidence against the null hypothesis. So we will reject the null hypothesis in this situation. On the other hand, if the p-value is high, say it is 10%, then that means the observed sample statistic is somewhere here. And if the rejection region is 5% of the distribution, then this means that the observed sample statistic does not lie in the rejection region. And therefore, this is an evidence in the support of null hypothesis. So we do not reject the null hypothesis in this case. This discussion takes me to the next point that I wanted to make. I told you that a high p-value supports the null hypothesis and a low p-value does not support the null hypothesis. But the question is, what determines whether the p-value is high or low? 
Well, I'm sure you can guess it now. It's the level of significance that determines whether the p-value is high or low. The rule is, if the p-value is greater than alpha, then we don't reject the null hypothesis. And if the p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. It's as simple as that. And the value of alpha will be given to you in the question. Okay, so now let me show you how easy it is to interpret the results while working with p-value. So suppose that we have to test whether the average number of hours that students of Delhi University spend studying is more than 20 hours per week or not. And let's say the level of significance is 5% and the p-value is 0.0668. So for this example, we have two claims, mu less than equal to 20 and mu greater than 20. And because the claim mu less than is equal to 20 has the equal to sign, so this claim is our null hypothesis. And consequently, the other claim that is mu greater than 20 is our alternative hypothesis. We are given that the p-value is 0.0668 and this p-value is greater than the alpha value because the value of alpha is 0.05. So in this case, because the p-value is greater than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. See, it is that simple to work with p-values. I hope with this, you have got a fair idea of what is p-value. Now, the next step is to learn how to calculate the p-value. I will cover this in my next lecture.